So what happened? Ansible made a Terraform provider. God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's so about three days ago from the recording of this video, Ansible surprised everybody and they announced to the world in this blog post that they have created a Terraform provider. So it's in the HashiCorp registry under the namespace Ansible. Uh, and it got one version so far. Uh, and if we look at it, uh, it's only got three resources, but we're gonna go over two of those in a video today. I'm gonna show you how to use this thing and then some thoughts on it. So in that blog post, uh, they announced this provider and they gave us some examples or just one example of how to use it. So basically they instantiate this provider within their main TF. They create a resource called Ansible host. And what that does is the resource creates a Ansible host in the state file, you know, with any of the host variables. Uh, and then there's a plugin that now comes with the cloud.terraform Ansible collection. So if you were to go to Ansible Galaxy and install this collection, and we're, I'm going to show you to do that in a minute, um, this inventory plugin, you just define it in your inventory file. And then when you query that inventory, the plugin looks at your state file and that builds the inventory, right? So it's like dynamic inventory, but against your state file. And then you can, you know, they have an example of them running a playbook against that inventory here. So I thought, why not, why not give it a go? Why not give it a spin in this video? So if you want to use this, the first thing you need to do is you need to download the collection from Ansible Galaxy. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this command real quick. And I already have it installed, but you're basically going to run Ansible Galaxy Collection install. And you can see I already have it installed. So once that it's installed, right, you just create an inventory file and you define that plugin, but you define the inventory plugin Terraform underscore provider. So when this runs, it's not actually going to populate the inventory file. When you run against the inventory, this plugin is going to look at the state file and then that will become your inventory. So over here on the provider documentation that they provide for us. Um, one of the things I didn't like was how basic it was, right? So they have this example here where they show you, here's an example of how we use a host and an Ansible group and vault. Um, and there's really no other explanation around it. Basically this expects you to know how to use Ansible. You need to know how to use Ansible. They're not walking you through it. They're not holding your hand. So like if, and then if we go to like one of the resources like host, uh, it's pretty basic right? Like, yeah, I know what's required. I know what's optional. And I know if it needs to be like a string or a map or whatever, but, uh, but there's not a whole lot of detail here. It doesn't seem like they tried very hard with the documentation. I don't know. Uh, but that is one of my complaints with this is I ran into a lot of errors trying to just use this because the documentation was very sparse. And then one of the other things I didn't like was I had a couple errors and the output messages for these errors were just not helpful. They were horrendous. But other than that, it worked great. So back over to my code here. Uh, real quick, I'm just deploying a VPC with everything I need to create an EC2 instance with a public IP address so I can connect to it with Ansible. But the important parts here for Ansible are is obviously you have to define the Ansible provider. And then I'm creating two resources here. So I think first, I think first I'll go over the Ansible host resource. So the Ansible host resource that they define in their documentation. Really, you just provide a name, which is, you don't know it yet. It's gonna be the DNS name or the IP address of the EC2 instance that gets created. And there's an issue with this, but we'll see that in a minute when I do an apply. And then you define a host group that you want it to be part of, and then any of the host variables, right? Obviously, I need to know the user I wanna connect as and the private key I wanna connect with. And then one of my host variables is actually a Ansible Vault encrypted secret. So I create an Ansible Vault resource and I say, I want to use this vault file, right? So vault.yaml, this contains my encrypted, right? If I decrypt this, uh, you can see this is the ID of the secret and this is the secret. Let me re-encrypt that. This is the password file I'm using to encrypt this file. So I just tell the main.tf, you know, create a vault resource using this file. And here's the password file for this file. And then I can create a local block and define a local variable using the YAML code function 
to decrypt this file. So all the secrets in here are decrypted, and then I can access each one of them by their secret ID. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. It's nothing crazy. So let me do a Terraform init here, just to initialize Terraform and then do an apply. So while we're waiting for that, uh, I just want to say real quick, I'm not slamming this provider. I'm not telling you you have to use or should use this provider. I'm simply informing you that this thing came out three days ago from the time of this recording. I found it a little bit interesting. Maybe you don't know about it, and now you know about it. So, And this is one of those errors I was talking about. So basically, the instance got created, the EC2 instance, uh, but the public IP wasn't really accessible yet. And this tried to happen too fast, um, so it couldn't get the public IP, so I just get this really crappy error here. So if I were to just run Terraform Apply, uh, now that this uh, IP is actually accessible, I really don't know what's happening here. I think it's some kind of race condition. But just do another Apply and it fixes it. All right, so that's done. So like I said, uh, all this does, the provider does, is put your host in the inventory, or your, in my case, the host and the vault secret, right? So here's my Ansible vault resource. It's got my path to my password file and my vault file, and here's the sensitive secret that's in it. If I had more, they would all show up under here. One thing I wish they would do is provide the ability for this to be sensitive, right? Because it, I mean, we are working with sensitive secrets here if we're using Ansible Vault, so we shouldn't really show it in plain text in the state file. And then we got the Ansible host resource here, and you can see it's got uh, my sensitive variable has been decrypted and assigned here as a host variable. So now if I run an Ansible-inventory against that inventory, right, nothing in here, but the plugin knows to look at the state file and then there's my inventory, right? So if I wanted to build a static inventory, I could just copy this and paste it somewhere into an inventory file. And then if I were to run my playbook here, um, it's really just installing a package in Genex. That's it. Uh, and you can see I'm connecting to my host because it's using the inventory file, which it's building from state and it knows to use the Ubuntu user and this private key to connect to the host. So there I am, I'm connected and I'm configuring and it's done. So overall, uh, I just found this interesting. Like I said, I'm not telling you, you have to use this. I'm not telling you whether it's good or bad. I'm just telling you, hey, it's here. Use it if you want. I'm just letting you know it, it's now floating around out there as of, you know, three days ago. So I think they'll make more improvements on this. I'm sure they will. Uh, so by the time you watch this video, if you're watching it six months to a year from now, it's probably way ahead of what I just showed you. <laughs>